LinkedIn contact targeting is a way for advertisers to upload lists of prospects or potential customers into the matched audiences section of LinkedIn campaign manager. In this video, we will show you the two ways that you can upload those lists. First is going to be pretty manual. So we'll go over the template, how it needs to be formatted to make sure that your upload goes smoothly. Then we'll also cover how you can integrate with certain CRM partners to make the list more automatic. Then we will show you how you can use those lists as either a targeting option within your campaigns or potentially as an exclusion for any other top of funnel campaigns. So we'll hop in right now and get started on how to create contact lists within LinkedIn. As I said in the intro, there are going to be two main ways that you can curate a contact list. The first one I'm going to cover is building a customized audience list yourself. So to do that, we need to go into the matched audiences section within campaign manager. To do that, head over to account assets. And the second option we see is matched audiences. You see, there are a variety of audiences we can create within campaign manager. And if you're curious about any of the other audiences you can create within LinkedIn ads, watch Michelle's video right here, covering the targeting options you have in LinkedIn for 2022. But we're here to talk about contact targeting. So to begin the process to start uploading your list, go to create audience. And the first option, we wanna upload a list. Initially, it says company and contact together. Don't worry, we'll be able to choose one in the next step. The default option right here under list type is contact list. And that would be the same dropdown if you do wanna do a company list. Think of that as ABM targeting. And Michelle also has another video on that one you can watch here. So we'll leave it as contact list. We will need to name this audience. So let me add something really quick so we can move on. There's my name. And now we can look at uploading a list. If you already have a list created, you can just go ahead and select it and upload it. That's already assuming that your file is in the proper format. If it's not formatted the way LinkedIn wants you to have it, the upload will not be successful. So the best thing for you to do is to click on the contact list template to get an understanding of how you should be formatting your list. Once you click on a link, it'll automatically download an Excel file for you to review. So either you can just start inputting your information into this template or use the information in the template to update your list, whatever, it doesn't matter. To match your contact targeting list to LinkedIn members, the file that you upload must include at least one of the following columns. Column A, the email column. If all you have is a list of names, you will need both the first name and last name. So yes, you can just load a list of just first name and last name, but think of how many people have the same name. It's probably not gonna be an accurate list. Including the email, it's gonna be very helpful. Next will be the company name. Notice the header says employee company or one of the mobile device IDs. There we see Apple, there we see Google, iOS and Android. So pretty much that means job title and country are never required fields. But as we know, the more information we give LinkedIn, the better chances they have of matching it to that user on the LinkedIn platform. LinkedIn will recommend an ideal size is 10,000 emails. If you know you have a pretty accurate list, don't worry, you don't need a list that high. But the maximum list size is 300,000 emails. So when you are creating your list, you have to use the headers that I have highlighted in the first row. You see that it's all lowercase, no spaces in between multiple words, formatting here is important. And when you do save the file, you have to save it as a CSV. That is the only file type LinkedIn supports for these uploads. Now a question we get from clients a lot is, should we upload a list of professional emails or personal emails? And our answer is going to be both. There's a good chunk of people who do sign up for LinkedIn using a professional email. While that's great, we know that people change jobs. And odds are, if you're changing jobs, you're not allowed to keep the email address from your old job. I personally have signed up for LinkedIn and any social platform with my personal email address. So since you may not know for sure exactly what that user used to sign up for LinkedIn, that's why it's a good thing to add both. The same member will not be duplicated in the matched audience multiple times, unless that user has created multiple LinkedIn profiles with the different email addresses. Not expecting that to happen a lot, so I wouldn't worry about that. I know I said LinkedIn recommends uploading a list of 10,000, and we've definitely uploaded lists that are way smaller than that. However, you need your list to match at least 300 verified LinkedIn users, otherwise it'll be too small to run. You'll be able to see that after you've uploaded your list, but it's good to tell you now, especially if you're a person who only has a list of about 100 total emails, you're gonna have to wait a little bit. Build a bigger list first. All right, so I have another list that I can upload. I'm gonna X out of this and choose that file instead. And before I agree and upload, I just wanna highlight this section here. It can take 48 hours for your audience to process, 
So you can still continue setting up the audience. You can still add it to a campaign, but if that's the only type of targeting you're using within that campaign, nothing will run until the audience is fully processed. Usually the contact audiences that we have uploaded are done within 24 hours, but within the past month, I've uploaded a really large list for another client and it did take a couple days. So I'd say this is a pretty accurate statement from LinkedIn. Have I ever seen it go longer than 48 hours? No, but even they say it's rare. Okay, so let's agree and upload. And on top, we see the audience I just uploaded is building. It's telling me it's too small right now. Makes sense, I just uploaded it. It's still processing. And then right now it's showing me it's under 300 members. The minimum amount we need to be able to use this audience in a campaign. Once the status is active, this audience count number will be updated with the matched number of users they have. So I'll get an idea of the audience size from this contact target list. And now we can start adding this list to a particular campaign. Like I said earlier, you can do this ahead of time if you want to proactively build your campaigns. It's just nothing will run until this list is eligible to be used. So let's go to campaign performance, and then we can start creating a new campaign. I'm going to skip the naming process in the campaign group. I'm not going to save this. Just pick any sort of campaign objective. All right, so here's my new campaign. Audience size is massive because I'm targeting everyone in the United States. But here we get to the section of who is your target audience. And audiences is already selected, so we can see list upload. There's contact list, and there's the audience we just created. You see it's still building, so if I select it, we lose the forecasted results off to the right-hand side because it's still processing. Once my contact list is done being processed, if the audience size is large enough, we'll get updated forecasted results. Let me remove all the attributes here. Pretend like we're starting over. All right, let's pretend you have a campaign that's targeting the specific industries of financial services and insurance. And let's say this is a first touch point, potentially top of funnel campaign, getting in front of users for the first time. One thing we recommend doing to make your top of funnel campaigns as successful as possible is to exclude people who are already customers. Besides uploading list of people you still need to nurture to an eventual conversion action, you can also exclude contact lists and choose it the same way that you would if you were targeting them. We need to choose list upload, contact list, and there it is. So that way, if I'm trying to reach out from the top of the funnel to try to get more customers, most likely I'm going to select attributes that already relate to my current customers. So trying to exclude my current customers and updating those exclusion lists frequently can make your top of funnel or nurturing campaigns much more effective. So that's how we can add audiences to a campaign from both a targeting and an exclusion level. Let me head back to the account. I'm going to go back up to account assets and head back to matched audiences. Another type of audience you can create is a lookalike audience, but a lookalike audience needs to have an established audience already set up within Campaign Manager. So if you click on one of your established audiences, normally this create a lookalike button will light up and you'll be able to go ahead and create a lookalike. I can't do it yet because I just uploaded this audience. It's still processing. It does not have at least 300 users. But if you're looking for more ways to find users with similar behaviors as your contact list, consider creating a lookalike audience to test. If you re-upload any of your contact lists, a lookalike audience in LinkedIn does not automatically update. You're going to have to create a new lookalike audience for each new contact list you upload. So we know the main way that you can create a contact list and upload it into LinkedIn. And to talk about the second way to upload a list, I'm going to jump to a specific LinkedIn help page. Because the second way you can get your contact list into LinkedIn Campaign Manager is to integrate your account with one of their supported CRM partners. And as of the recording of this video, here are the nine options you have. We already created a video on how to connect your LinkedIn account with HubSpot. If you are a HubSpot user and you're watching this video, check it out. It's going to show you everything you can do once you integrate those two platforms. But if you don't have HubSpot, you can come to the link that I have on the screen right now, click on one of the partner links and it will send you to the proper page on how you can integrate that CRM with LinkedIn. All pretty step-by-step -step and straightforward. From there, your list can automatically populate in the uploaded list menu within LinkedIn. It's a lot easier to keep your contact target list updated without having to manually uploading a new one or an updated one. Going back to what I said with lookalikes, even if you have a CRM integration within the channel, your lookalikes will still not automatically update. You will have to continue to create new lookalikes whenever you feel your automatic lists have updated. And that's how easy it is to set up contact targeting for LinkedIn. We have a lot of lead gen clients. 
And for every single one of them, LinkedIn has been by far the best platform for them to collect the most qualified leads. And within each of those accounts, the best two types of campaigns that are driving some of the lowest cost per lead numbers and still extremely qualified has been the company targeting lists and these contact targeting audiences. So that's my vote of confidence for you if you haven't tested these types of audiences out yet. If you have any additional questions on how to format the lists, upload it, how we use it and structure it within any particular campaigns, please let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching our video. If you found it useful, give us a thumbs up below. We release a new video at least once a week, so if you want to see more from the Paid Media Pros channel, be sure to subscribe.